Whether you know him for his crazy hair, his weird free throw shooting, or the fact that he blatantly disrespected Russell Westbrook, Russell Westbrook did him a lot. Bricks. Oh, no, no, oh. no, 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 no. Jeremy Sohan is slowly becoming the NBA's most underrated rookie, and he deserves your attention. So today, let's take a look at Jeremy Sohan's rookie season in depth, breaking down what he's done well and what he can improve upon, but ultimately, why he's got a bright future ahead of him in this league. Today's video is brought to you by Prize Picks. With the NBA season in full swing, there's no better way to enjoy the games than with Prize Picks, which is the easiest way to play daily fantasy sports. And in the true spirit of Christmas, Prize Picks has given us a free square for the holidays, reducing Nikola Jokic's point projection all the way down to just half a point. So if you want to take advantage of this great opportunity, make sure to sign up for Prize Picks today using my code TJHOOPS to receive a 100% deposit match up to $100. So what are you waiting for? Sign up for Prize Picks today and let's win big together. Going into the 2022 NBA Draft, Jeremy Sohan was kind of a weird prospect. A 6'9", 230-pound forward who attended Baylor University and put up some pretty underwhelming numbers for a lottery pick standards. Not to mention, he came off the bench for all but one game last season. So how did this guy become the ninth overall pick in the 2022 Draft? Well, let's take a look at his scouting report, starting with his strengths. He was a defensive stalwart who could guard 1 through 5, whether it be his primary assignment or off a switch, but he truly excelled off the ball, creating deflections, lurking the passing lanes, and playing the role of a roaming 4 within Scott Drew's zone-heavy defensive scheme. Sohan's defensive instincts paid off in other ways too, as he was a terrific rebounder who averaged over 10 a game per 40 minutes, and on offense, he was someone who could handle the ball extremely well for his size, even running some point guard for Scott Drew late in the season. That brings us to his weaknesses, and to be honest, most of them were on the offensive end, because this man couldn't shoot to save his life, a 29% three-point shooter and a 59% free throw shooter. Yuck. His lack of a shooting presence made him somewhat of a black hole on the offensive end at times, as he wasn't able to play the role of a stretch four, he didn't get involved enough in off-ball movements, and he couldn't create his own shot. He was a decent finisher around the rim, but outside of that, he couldn't really do much, especially if he didn't have the ball in his hands. As for the defensive side of the ball, it was a lot harder to find a weakness because he was just so damn good on that end, but if I had to point something out, it would be his timing, as Sohan would often bite on a lot of pump fakes, which led to easier shots for the opposing offense. So to recap, his biggest strengths were his defensive versatility and his potential as a point forward, while his weaknesses consisted of shooting, off-ball movement on the offensive end, and defensive timing. This led to a lot of scouts comparing him to guys like Nicholas Batum and Draymond Green, making him a very intriguing prospect. And eventually, the San Antonio Spurs cashed in, selecting him ninth overall, and it made sense because the Spurs lacked a front court presence, which was something Sohan could help with. And so far, I'd say he's made an immediate impact. His box score numbers paired with his putrid shooting splits may look less than impressive, but those numbers don't tell the whole story, because most of what the scouts said about him is absolutely true. He's a defensive menace who can guard 1 through 5 while excelling both on and off the ball. Not to mention his timing and defensive discipline are much improved. Let's take a look at some examples, starting with this play. Watch Sohan the entire time. Impressive. And I'm not even talking about the block, I'm talking about the IQ and awareness. As soon as Sohan notices D'Lo and Gobert engage in pick and roll, he immediately steps into a position to defend the rim. However, in the process, he's forced to abandon a very good three-point shooter in Carl Anthony Towns. But Sohan knows Rudy Gobert isn't a great playmaker out of the pick and roll, so his presence alone was enough to hinder Minnesota's entire play. Even more impressive is this instance, though. 
Here we can see D'Angelo Russell running full speed in transition, and you can notice nobody is picking him up, because Jeremy Sohan is pointing for someone to do it. But Sohan then realizes Trey Jones is doing the exact same thing, because that's Trey Jones' man but he's too far behind the play to pick him up. So Sohan takes matters into his own hands, stops the fast break, and forces D'Lo into an awkward left-handed layup. But my personal favorite Sohan clip is right here on Steph Curry. The Warriors try to set a stagger screen for Steph Curry as they often do, but Sohan notices this from a mile away, pressing Curry in a face guard off the slip, and once Dante DiVincenzo throws the entry pass, it's an easy steal for Jeremy Sohan. At times though, he can still be seen biting on pump fakes as he does here with Javon Carter. But what's impressive about Sohan is his ability to recover and still force a tough shot. We've even seen some flashes from him on the offensive end as well, as he's coming off back-to-back 14-plus -back point performances. In these games, we've seen a lot more off-ball movement and dribble penetration that not only opens up the game for himself, but his teammates. As Sohan can be seen bringing up the ball, engaging in dribble handoffs, and diving to the rim, which makes the Spurs offense so much more fluid. So as you can see, Jeremy Sohan not only carried over all of his strengths from college to the pros, but he's also improved upon a lot of his weaknesses. A great example of this being his free throw shooting. His box score percentage of 51.3% may not suggest that, but his one-handed free throws certainly do. People are quick to judge, but the real reason Sohan is shooting free throws with one hand is to teach himself to keep his elbow tucked in on free throws. And so far, it's been working. He made the adjustment in pregame shoot-around for the Spurs' December 19th matchup against the Houston Rockets, and before that date, Sohan was 11 of 24 from the charity stripe, good for 46%. But since then, he's 9 for 15, which is 60%. Uh, he's, he's courageous, he's pretty fearless, he doesn't worry about what people think, he just wants to get better. Uh, so that's just a, a character thing. A lot of guys wouldn't even want to try it, they would embarrass them, it would bother them, you know, but he doesn't care. But that concludes my recap of Jeremy Sohan's rookie season up to this point, and I hope you enjoyed. But with all that being said, peace.